In my latest video, we talked about a big any twist. So yeah, we finally got it. Just not the one that I personally was expecting. But still, a huge detail. But more importantly, we got the final line drawn in the sand when Eren finally reveals his plan. Can Eren even be stopped? I believe that only one thing can stop him right now. And we will talk all about that and much more right now. So don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel and don't forget to turn on all notifications to get notified when a new video is available. Also, I am proud to introduce to you the new manga horse. So let me know if you like him. I commissioned him from a very nice and talented artist on Fiverr and I will leave a link to their page in the description. And now, let's analyze our chapter called Sinners. A very suitable name for this chapter, as for almost every character unveils their own indiscretions and wrongdoings in this huge conflict. And we will get to see this several times. We find our group on board the flying boat, still shaken up from Anji's death and the near-death experience at the docks. Union Kupon informs us that there was only time to fill up half of the fuel tank, so I bet this little piece of information will come into effect in the next chapter. By the way, in my previous video I talked about the Iceburst Stone and about its possible use as a weapon. I wanted to add that the stone was also meant to be used as a special fuel for the flying boats, as we can see from Kiyomi's explanation in this panel. Back on the plane, Armin, which is now the new commander, takes control and gathers the group to discuss their plan. Over a very poorly drawn sketch of Titan Eren, we get our first twist. It seems that the scouts are not sure where Eren is located inside what they call a huge pile of bones. And that is because of the special ability of the Warhammer to enable the user to be outside of the nape. I've been really waiting to see when this power will come into effect. And now it finally did. Peek thinks that Armin dropping the Colossal Titan on top of Eren will be enough to destroy him. But the truth is, if Eren uses the power of the Warhammer, then this won't work. And there is actually one person that can probably get him out. And I'll explain all of that real soon. Armin agrees that this would be the most effective way of action, but only after they talk to Eren, and only as the last resort. Levi tells the group what I've been saying for a while. Where is Zeke? And if he is controlling the founding titan, maybe killing him may stop it. That always sounded pretty logical to me. If Zeke enabled it, then maybe he is also the way to stop it. Pick replies that they don't know Zeke's location as well, and Levi answers that they will just have to find him inside those bones. That means he believes Zeke tagged along with Eren's titan, and we all know Zeke is not dead. So, I am really excited to see where he's been hiding for more than 10 chapters now. We can also see how much Levi is determined to stop Zeke, and we can completely understand him. Working with Zeke was very hard for Levi. It stood between him and the promise he gave to Erwin. And now, there is nothing stopping him from doing what he should have done years ago. And if this can actually end the rumbling, then it's just another bonus for Levi. Jean says that in order to stop the rumbling, he will also do anything. He will not let all the killings they did be for nothing. I really love Jean. He would have been a perfect commander. And I think after losing Hanji and Flock on the same day, he is finally 100% sure what he needs to do. Unlike a few chapters back, when he was still conflicted between Eren and the group. Pay attention that he says stop the rumbling and not stop Eren. Unlike Levi, which his main objective is to kill Zeke, in hopes that it will stop the rumbling as Hanji suggested. Next, we have Connie, finally seeing how it was for Reiner and for the warriors back then to be called traitors, especially after his friends called him the same a few chapters ago just before he killed them. Reiner tells him that his own sins are beyond redemption, but the only thing they can do now is to work together to save the rest of humanity. Even if we cannot be redeemed, we must do it. Now for Jean. He tells Reiner that they are the same and that he had no right to judge Reiner after he himself killed so many in order to save others. Reiner recalls that Eren told him the same thing back in Liberio. And actually this was mentioned in the manga a few times before. The resemblance between Eren and Reiner. Reiner thinks that Eren might actually want them to stop him. And Armin says that he also wondered about this as well. If Eren can actually control every Eldian and Titan, why can they still use their own titans? 
That could also answer the question we had after Eren 3D Mirror. I wanted to see a Titan transformation back then to see if it's even possible. But then the female and the armored did it. And we all wondered who was in charge of all the Titan creation now. Peek asks if it does it to not interfere with their plan. And Armin says yes. Eren is letting them act freely. Almost like he's testing them. Reiner says that it must have been painful for Eren doing all those things he did, and if it was him, he would probably want someone else to handle the power of the founding titan. And if he couldn't do it, he would have wanted someone to stop him. We can take Reiner's word here. After all, he suffered a mental breakdown over the things he did since that day in Shiganshina. So if there is someone who can relate to Eren, it's probably him. And now, for the fun part of the chapter. As soon as Reiner finishes talking, our entire group, minus Sonia Coupon, who is not an Eldian, finds themselves in the paths, in front of the coordinates. I feel sorry for Hanji and Flock. They died just before getting here. The group starts calling for Eren, trying to explain he's done enough, trying to convince him that no one will approach Paradis for centuries after what he did, so he doesn't need to go any further. They also say that they were the ones that drove Eren to act this way, and they asked him to stop killing people for them. Connie also apologizes for hating him because of what happened to Sasha, but now he realizes that Eren was as sad as the rest of them back then. Even Mikasa pitches in, saying that they are all guilty of the same sin, and she wants to share the burden with him if he just came back to them. Mikasa is going to have the hardest decision of her life, and we will touch on that subject in a few minutes. Even Levi is here to offer us some comic relief, promising Eren only an ass kicking if he just stops everything. Good job, Levi. And then the group gets the answer they have been so afraid of. The rumbling will not stop. I will not let fate decide Paradis's future. I will keep moving forward. In the distance, standing in front of the coordinates, they see young Eren looking at them. Armin, Connie, Mikasa and Jan rush towards him, trying to convince him and begging him to talk to them, while Levi, Pick and Reiner stay in the back. I know you already know that time works differently in the paths, but now we can see how space is acting funny as well. Notice the four run away from Reiner, Pick and Levi, only to arrive at them from the other side, but never really approaching Eren. You can see how confused everyone is when they see they only got to the same point. In order to gain my own freedom, I will take freedom from the world. But I will not take anything from any of you. You are all free. The group looks at the giant tree of light to find young Ymir now standing next to young Eren. Eren continues, So long as we both have our unbreakable conviction, we will collide. There is only one thing for us to do. Fight. Apparently, Eren called him there to tell them there is no chance in trying to talk him out of this. He already made up his mind. He followed his future memories, and he already drawn the line in the sand. And now, it is their time to choose. If you want to stop me, then try to stop me from ever taking another breath. You are all free. This is almost like Eren wants to test his own conviction. If he is worthy of his freedom, or will his friends stop him? In a way, that is what Reiner also said before. The group stares at him without talking, and Levi is looking really depressed. And if you ask me, he knew this will not lead to anything, and he knew Eren will not back down. So for Levi, his plan to kill Zeke probably just became a lot more relevant. The next moment, the group members find themselves disoriented on the plane, and now that they understand there is no more room for negotiation, Levi turns to Armin and asks him, What should we do now, Commander? Just a little side note here, is it just me, or did Levi's fingers just magically grow back after being in the paths? Tell me what you think about it, is it just a drawing mistake, or did Eren gave Levi the gift of fingers? This is heartbreaking. Armin looks confused and Mikasa looks devastated. Eren has finally left them, just like she was always afraid he would do. And now, more than ever, I want to see what Mikasa will do next. From the plane, we go to the boat and to Kiyomi and Henny. Remember in my last video I told you Isayama will never let Henny go? Well, there we have it. Because not only that, 
but it seems Annie will have a pretty huge part in the next chapters, so let's explore this and also find out what is the only thing that can stop Eren. Also here on the ship, the characters bring up their scenes in the conflict. Kiyomi talks about how she brought together the two brothers, what made the rumbling possible. She also finally admits that her first motives were honor and profit, and that she never tried to search for a better solution to protect the Eldians. She also wonders why do people can't feel they lost respect for others only after it already happened, and Annie thinks back on her friends both in the warrior unit and in the scouts, and also of course about Armin. Falco and Gabi interrupt them to tell them about a memory Falco witnessed, a memory belonging to Zeke. Like I suggested before, the fact that Falco's titan came from Zeke's spinal fluid made him and Falco connected in a way, and if you ask me, I bet there is more to it, and there is even a chance Zeke can have more control over Falco now. In the memory, Falco saw himself flying in the sky, and from that he realized that there was actually a flying beast titan in the past, which was actually foreshadowed a few times. When Marley complained there are no titans with wings, and also when Historia turned into a winged titan in that OVA, but it is important to say that this OVA was not canon. But more than anything, the famous OP with the beast titan running with different animals now seems logical. There were indeed different beast titans in the past. In addition, we talked about how Falco's titan looks like a bird, and Falco now confirms that he believes he can actually fly, because of his connection to Zeke. But anyway, this is not even the best thing, because in a single line of text we get the female titan's special ability, which was kept secret all this time. Apparently, the female titan is some sort of Kirby, and she can gain other titan's abilities by eating parts of them. This actually disproves my theory about how Annie can use the titan scream. Now we know where this power came from, as Annie probably ate some body part of the beast titan. And of course, her famous crystal that looks especially like the crystal used by the Warhammer Titan. At the beginning of this video I mentioned someone that can stop Eren. Let's talk about it. We know that the only way to break the crystal is by using the claws or jaws of the jaw titan. So in that case, only the current holder of the jaws can take Eren out of this crystal by force. So now we know that Falco can fly, and that Annie can obtain other titan's abilities. So, will Annie become a flying titan too? Absolutely yes. Why am I so sure? Because after Kiyomi told her that Izuru had delicious seafood, Annie said that they can also eat birds, which is the mother of foreshadowing. So yes, I can absolutely see Annie eating part of Falco and going to visit Eren to finish their fight from all those years ago. Annie tells Falco that their plan is crazy and if it transforms on the ship it might sink. But Kiyomi tells her that she doesn't mind if the ship sinks, if the alternative is leaving with more regrets. And right from there we go to Eren's next point of attack, Fort Salta. Now let me tell you something. If there weren't any flying vehicles involved, this place in the real world would have been so hard to conquer, like seriously, almost impossible. Look how high it is, and there is only one way to go up or down. We then see a train holding another surprise for Annie, it looks like her father is alive, and he was able to hijack the train in order to try and get to an airship, and he is not alone. With him on the train we see several survivors from Liberio, including Gabby's parents, Reiner's mom, and Mr. Finger, Peek's dad. Suddenly, the people on the train notice that the airships are starting to take off, and from the other side, they see the rumbling and Eren closing by. This panel looks so weird to me, like CGI inside manga, and I bet there will be a lot of CGI in the anime as well. Look, I even made a CGI animation to help Mappa. You are welcome, Mappa Studio. The Marleyan soldier looks hopeful. We might be saved! The airship are bombing them! They are going to blow the titans away from up in the air! And our very informative chapter ends with Eren's huge titan and the flying ships in the background. And honestly, this is the perfect time to show off some Warhammer skills and shoot them from the sky. So yeah, I would love to see Eren's titan finally doing something besides being creepy. But in any case, if Eren is inside his crystal, then his titan will just get rebuilt over and over, until someone will be able to break him out of his crystal. So, who will be the one to do it? 
Falco or any. My bets are on any, but if you have any other ideas, do let me know in the comments below. And what will Mikasa do? Will she finally give up on Eren and her iconic scarf? What do you think? And what about Levi's fingers? Did they really grow back on? Tell me your thoughts about it. If you enjoy listening to me being a nerd for Titans, then don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. And thank you so much for joining me today. Me and the new manga horse will see you all real soon. But until then, let me just remind you all to dedicate your hearts for humanity inside and outside the walls.